you remember what years you were posting? Like, yeah, it was uh, 2003 until oh shit, like until... probably like 2011 on and off. Laney, Laney, I may have, I may have seen your post. It's possible. Why didn't we... you fuck me? I... What's the problem? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> this might be one of the few moments where I regret like not having a video content setup. <laughs> the moment where Laney Spicer says, "Billy, then why didn't you fuck me? Why didn't you fuck me?" But first, a word from our sponsors. It's the vibrator that has no equal. And now, Motor Bunny offers their thrusting sex machine, the Motor Bunny Buck. Enjoy a fan whore discount at manwhorepod.com slash motorbunny or use promo code manwhore at checkout. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to all you thirst trappers, DL rappers, thick booty clappers, and daddy Jake tappers. This is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Ooh, I like those. I think that one, I haven't been proud about a set of those in a while, but I like that. I like daddy Jake tappers. Where'd that come from? Mmm, brilliance. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's me. It's Billy. This time, I am not editing this week's show from the emergency room. Wait, let me, I'll tell you about that in a second. This week on the pod, I have got back a returning guest, not very common on this show, but yes, we have returning guest, Lainey Spicer, porn publicist extraordinaire. We are getting all up in Craigslist stories. Very excited. This is a very fun episode. Uh, Craigslist is very much one of my favorite topics of conversation. It's one of the few places I feel special because I did a bunch of crazy fucking wild Craigslist shit that everyone else was too scared to do. So we're going to do that in a bit. But first, yeah, last week I, I, as you heard, if you listen through to the very end of the episode, you heard me saying that I was in quite a bit of discomfort, dare I say pain, and that I was worried my appendix might have been bursting. Well, um, it was not my appendix. I did turn off the microphone. I very quickly took the files off of my recording device. I threw them onto the laptop. I packed a bag. I got an Uber, and I got to Bellevue. Uh, not, Not for the psych reasons. The pain was not in my head. It was actually inside me. Uh, I had a kidney stone that was moving through my body. As I was trying to speak to you, a kidney stone was very slowly scraping its way through my kidney and out into my uter, slowly, agonizingly slowly making its way to my bladder. So it was a long fucking night. I edited a slut show in the emergency room. Like while I was editing the podcast, I was watching a homeless man stand up out of his hospital bed. He walked over to the hazardous material bin and took a piss, which some of you might go, you know what? That's not the most wrong place to urinate, Uh, except he walked over to the bin, which was open, and then he flipped it closed. (laughs) I'm like, oh, that's no, that's wrong. But yeah, that might have been like some of the worst pain I've ever been in in my life was that kid. It felt, oh, and just, oh, like when it first started being uncomfortable, I took a hit from a bowl and was like, maybe some weed will help with the pain. But no, it didn't help with the pain at all. It just made me like feel very relaxed about the pain. Like I'm in immense pain and then I'm saying out loud to myself, wow, I'm in immense pain, bro. I got to the hospital. Not to the emergency room entrance. Oops. I'm wearing my slippers. I have a backpack. Because, again, I didn't. I thought if it was my appendix, I was going to get admitted and I might be there overnight. And I was not going to miss a Wednesday. Never. Would not miss a man or podcast day for you people. So I was like, I have my laptop with me and everything. And I just kind of shuffled into the ER being like, my tummy really, really hurts. But I make eye contact with the nurse, with like, a, I don't, I don't want to blow up her spine, like name her actual position, but we're just going to say a nurse who is in a position of authority, I am making eye contact with. And even though she's got her mask on, I was like, is that Anissa? 
I totally forgot that she was a nurse and that I would maybe see her should I go to an emergency room. And I do not blame any of you for not recognizing that name, but uh, Anissa was a guest on episode 153. She was one of my naked podcast guests. The second time around, I did. I, I used to do these naked podcasts because I had this theory that like we are our most vulnerable selves when we're nude in front of a new person. And I thought it'd be interesting dynamic and interesting tension to like combine that vulnerability with a discussion about these vulnerable topics, sex, dating, sexuality, gender, love. So I talked to total strangers naked. Uh, and when I did the second round of these naked shows, I, I, I talked to this trans woman. Uh, for, who I matched with on Tinder. We sat across from each other and just like did our best to not stare at each other's dicks. Got to catch up with her. Uh, if you want to hear Anissa's naked episodes, episode 153, scroll way the fuck back to get to that one. So yeah, now I got a kidney stone sitting in my bladder. It's been sitting there for uh, for just almost a week now. And I, you know, there's not really anything they can do. It's like half a millimeter, so it's not very large. It's going to pass naturally. But they told me, like, you could pass it right here, right now, while you're in this emergency room, or you might pass it two weeks from now. So one day, I don't know when, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and I'm going to have the most painful experience of my entire life. They have no way of knowing when it's going to be. I'm not going to like feel it beforehand. I'm not really going to like feel a lot of pain before it decides it wants to shoot out. But like, I'm going to try to take a piss one day and there's going to be blood and I'm going to shoot a little stone into the toilet bowl, experiencing a sensation that the, you know, all the doctors, including the female doctors really could only compare to childbirth. But yeah, so that's, uh, you know, every time I go to the bathroom in a public setting, I start like straining my face just in case it's coming because I'm not going to scream at a think coffee. I'm going to shove the screams down like a boomer trying to shove his vulnerability deep, deep inside himself. Uh, and so that way I can just, you know, pass a kidney stone and then just go back to a date. That's my plan. But again, I wasn't going to let that get in the way of getting you your man whore podcast on time last week. Hey, folks, Thursday, August 25th, we got another hot, ooh, mm, spicy, hot movie night coming up next week. Me and my fellow fan whores are going to be watching Taboo American Style Part 2. Part 1, mm, it was just so delicious last month. We all decided, you know, we got to know where this story is going. We got to know what fucked up manipulation is Nina going to do to the rest of her family and friends. And as some, in spoiler alert, as someone who has seen this movie before, oh gosh, it's uncomfortably hot. Hot movie night is when we like to get together as a fan whore community and, uh, and watch a retro classic pornography film together. If you want to do some diddling, you know, just turn your mic and your camera off. You're welcome to enjoy the film. You can uh, you can do as one user did. Uh, she she was she was stroking her clit with one hand and typing in the chat box with the other. But Hot Movie Night is only available for members of my Patreon community. Yup, that's the that's the rub. That's the catch. That's the spin. You can become a member for just two dollars today at patreon.com slash man podcast that's patreon dot com slash man podcast or download the patreon app and you can find me on there again that is a uh, hot movie night next thursday august 25th 10 p.m eastern time okay before i get to this week's guest laney spicer let's do a quick fan whore appreciation moment okay this is the part of the podcast where I like to lend a little shout out to one of my very wonderful supporters on Patreon, someone I hope I'll be seeing and or hearing next Thursday on Hot Movie Night. I want to give a shout out right now to Mark Wood, who, by the way, back when I was a baby podcaster in 2014, when I was just a bright eyed 24 year old with a, a couple of microphones and a silly idea, uh, Mark Wood was doing a blog. And he was the first person to ever interview me about the Man Whore podcast. I met him up on the west side at some coffee shop. He still had like a literal tape, like cassette tape. The Gen Z listeners, go Google what a tape was. He had like a literal tape recorder. 
And like we did the interview, but afterwards I was like, dude, you know, you can, you got a voice memo thing on your phone. It, it's, it might be a lot easier. I had to show him how to use his voice note app. That was very, very adorable. But Mark, thank you so much for supporting the Man Whore Podcast on Patreon. I was so happy to see your name pop up. So happy that you're supporting the show. Thank you oh so very much. And again, you too can become a member and support the pod at patreon.com slash Podcast. And now for this week's guest, Lainey Spicer. Lainey is uh, a porn publicist. She has been in the industry for decades. I had her back on the podcast talking about what it's like to be a porn publicist. And if you want to go hear her first episode, go check out episode 187. It's not it's not frequent that I have guests on for a repeat unless they're Andrea Allen. And Kenzie, I think Kenzie and Andrea Allen are like neck and neck for most man whore podcast appearances. I'm going to have to go count sometime. But uh, yeah, I don't normally have people back on. But uh, I was I was chatting with Lainey last week. She she's the publicist for Chanel O'Marmy, last week's guest, and she was like, "Billy, you should have me on again. I have all these Craigslist stories I want to share." I was like, "Lainey, did you get up to some Craigslist shenanigans?" Mm. So I uh, you know I drove out and and we had a really fun chat. We exchanged some fun stories. This is going to cover like an era of internet hookup history that they need to write books about. Craigslist was like something special that like, even though I talk about Reddit all the time, it ain't the same. It was a wild place. And I'm so sorry to all of you who did not and will not get to experience it. Uh, so this is, this is a fun chat. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, and, and if you're in the champagne room, folks, Go to the episode discussion channel, and I would love to read your Craigslist hookup experiences if you would care to share them. But for now, <laughs> let's get into it with Lainey Spicer. This is very unknown. People don't know this about me. Are we like, breaking? Was, we're breaking. No, like, <laughs> I'd say the people that knew about it, I, they don't even live in New York anymore. Like, my best friend at the time, she lives in South Carolina. So, like, okay. no, I, I had, like, this total secret sex life. Uh, if only the porn girls knew. Yes, but, you know, you don't want to think of your mom being nasty. I, in you this know, industry? You know, I don't know. Not we a little have, bit? No, I don't know. Like, every time I've been at events, like when I was at Penthouse, and there was, like, uh, the few times there was, like, some guy that I liked to maybe step to me, they would suddenly, you know, like, Lainey, I need you, you know? like, like Stop yeah. cock-blocking mama. I know, it happened. Okay. I was like, God damn it, I hardly ever meet anybody. <laughs> Jesus, you know? But, uh, yeah, no, they don't, they don't want it. They don't want it. They want um, attention me. Did you ever, have you ever slept with a male talent? No, no, no. I thought about it once during this the whole time. Um, it was when I was writing my book for um, you know the hundred porn star sex life book, you know okay. the sex stories, and a lot of those were referrals. And there was one I won't mention. There, but there's one male porn star that I interviewed, and we just kind of hit it off, and we started just texting. Like you lived in L.A., it wasn't a we were just texting about stupid shit, like, you know, um, oh, well, like one time he's texting, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm having a snack of life cereal right now. And he goes, I love life cereal. I have it at home, too. And I said, yeah, isn't it nice when it gets a little, you know, wait, it gets a little mushy. It's like best. And he's like, it's much, like, it was just ridiculous very shit like that. Very, very hot pre-talk. Yeah, yeah. And, and we just started talking a lot. And... Around the same time, uh, it was getting flirty, and around the same time, I had a uh, Caden Cross came uh, to promote the a September issue of Penthouse, and she was she, Caden, and she, I think she's still married to a porn star, but she always dated them, even before Manuel, uh, even before she married Manuel Ferreira, she always dated porn stars, and I said to, I was kind of curious, and I said to her, "You date them all the time?" I said, "You know, I was thinking about it. I was thinking, you know." That should be the most secure a relationship I could possibly be in because he gets to fuck these like 22 year olds all day. So, like, I don't have to worry about him cheating or anything. <laughs> and she goes, Laney, you would think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> and I said, What do you mean? And she goes, They cheat. 
they cheat like crazy. And oh. I said, even though they get to fuck all these women and all this stuff. And she said, they can't have enough, these guys. You know, they still want to prove how attractive they are. Like, they're so insecure, porn, male porn talent, that yeah. they always want to, like, just, you know, get more of that adoration or more or something like that. So, I mean, I, I got it from the horse's mouth, so... I decided, like, I kind of pulled back, you know, yeah. and I was like, yeah, I don't know, you know, because it's like, if you can't be faithful and I have to put up with you, your the day, job. your job, like, you know, what's in it for me then, mm. you know, but, uh, and, and it's funny, like, that, and that guy literally got married, like, two months later, even though we're flirting and everything, yeah. like, crazy, and then, and then when I met him in, in L.A., finally like i was doing some sort of tour in la and he came with his wife and uh, i didn't even expect him to show up i invited him he just showed up yeah. he saw i was there and he he said to his wife he said this is laney that's the the woman that was you know it's like the two of you i was going back and forth on oh so like you, it was down to you it was down to you two <laughs> yeah i didn't know that i was like oh i felt bad when i looked at her luckily you know, they're not married now, and, like, we, we talked about him since, and we're, like, both kind of rolled our eyes about him. The two of you. The yeah, two years gals. later, wow. years later, I said, I want you to know that, like, I never, like, we just texted, like, we didn't even sext, like, yeah. nothing. Like, I don't want you to think that, you know. And she goes, oh, he's a ridiculous person. And I said, I know, I know. <laughs> like that. Oh, I don't want, like, part of me doesn't want to know what they would say if, uh, if my exes were getting together. But then again, I've also thrown a few shows where, like, that's exactly what I did, was I put a bunch of exes on a stage together. <laughs> I got to say that I find that very brave because I would I could never do that because it would be so obvious that I have a type that it would embarrass me so bad. Like, all of a sudden, you'd see on the stage nothing but a row of blonde guys, you know, who are, like, this tall or look like this or whatever. And, like, I would just be so embarrassed that... You know, like they would look at each other like, oh, okay. Well, we are back with uh, Born Mama, Lainey Spicer. Hello. Uh, the the, uh, the, the pu porn publicist extraordinaire. I can't Aww. find anyone who's not a publicist who has a bad thing to say about her. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I ask around because I'm always just like, there's no way everybody loves her. But no, so far it seems like. Just there are a few people that hate me. <laughs> there are a few. There okay. are a few. Not many, but Not, there are a few. Oh, there see, we few. have the inverse thing. Many hate me. A few don't. A few don't. A few don't hate I me. I don't hate you. I just like to bust your balls, <laughs> Billy. I love it. I hope you know I just enjoy it. I just enjoy mm -hmm. publicly embarrassing you like so my long. little bro. You know, you're like a little bro to me now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I like, like, you know, when you say you have an OnlyFans, I have to ask questions about it. I and then sometimes I just get, I just have to sometimes, <laughs> look, I can take like 10 ribs and every time I take 10, I have to like sometimes ask like, but everything's still chill, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I, I just need to know. I can't stop once I start. I know, I get, I go, I go too far. I miss working with people. I used yeah. to harass people at Penthouse all the time when mm -hmm. I get bored, like I needed, I just get up out of my cubicle and just sort of wander around the office yeah. and like dip into other people's cubicles and bother them but now i work by myself mm. so like facebook's as good as i can get to harassing oh co-workers i'm glad we can not make harassment easier for you to do now. <laughs> now you know so you know now you know but yeah. but you you know you texted me about like i should come back on the show i got all yeah. these craigslist stories yes and i mean if there's anything i love talk about is craigslist casual encounters r.i.p oh my god i feel bad for these kids now they don't know they don't know they have read it but that's like the closest they got it's it's still not the same these apps are crap next to now i've been i met my husband right when apps just got big so okay. 10 years ago i met him and uh, a little over 10 years and um the apps were just, it started Tinder, and uh, I think Tinder just started, and uh, I did meet him on an app, but it was Match.com, which is different, you know, it was like me. But my, I have plenty of friends my age group who are single, and um, I'm always like, what, I'm always like, what's the, I, I am, at first I thought they were actually at fault, because I was like, what's the rub, bub, like, go get laid, you know, go on there, da 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 you're free, da 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 and you go, and the, they're like, no, it's not like that anymore, Lainey. And I'm like, really? 
and they said like people aren't like this anymore. I don't like I, what? I don't know. Like like people more want to like trade pictures, I guess, than meet and fuck in person. Like meet. Yeah. They're telling me that people don't really aren't like people flake a lot or people just uh you know, um They'll be like, oh, do you have like Snapchat? Do you have any pictures or whatever? Or maybe they're lying to me, but um, Craigslist was fun. I mean, uh, I thought yeah. it was, like, yeah, there was like, I hardly had anything ever. Like, I had friends when the Craigslist killer came out that mm-hmm. were like, my girlfriend, Rachel, who's probably the only one who really knew, knew about all this, she was like, listen, you just like, don't go on Craigslist anymore. There's like a killer loose. And- yeah, all it takes is one person doing it in one place and they go like, now the entire place isn't safe. Yeah. No, honey, the world isn't safe. Yeah. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> but then you found out that the guy did this with uh, prostitutes and or sex workers, I should yeah. say. So, because um, when it came out, uh, my friend Kristen Davis, the Manhattan Madam, said spoke out about it because she one of the girls who was murdered was one mm. of the women that worked for her service as the Manhattan Madam, and she said you shut down all these brothels and you know. Uh, escort services this is what happens girl goes goes out on their own without any protection mm-hmm. and everything and she said wouldn't happen you know under my watch because mm-hmm. we have a whole safety thing going on here mm-hmm. you know we have drivers we have codes we have this we have that you know you just you know but uh so i i don't think uh it would have happened to me because i wasn't charging it's given away for free sure <laughs> <laughs> well craigslist like for those free. for those who don't know like craigslist is still up but the casual encounter section has been is gone the whole dating not yeah. just cash well, any, any sort of connecting yeah yeah um and they i think they did that because of sex work because of fosta sesta is the 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 week sesta fosta pass i think it was like march 2018 or something like that yeah. um that went down back page goes down like everything clammed right the fuck up yeah but like if you want something super specific oh my was craigslist the place for it it was yes it was so much fun yes no matter what you're into you could find seven people on craigslist into it you could be a little person construction worker (laughs) who's into like having sex like on a pogo stick and you will find (laughs) seven people who will do that with you at one time i swear what is it i did oh um when I was a lot younger in my 20s, I used to only date guys. You know, it was the 1990s, so I used to only date guys with really long hair. Okay. And all of a sudden, I decided in like my mid-30s that I wanted to go back to my roots, and I posted on Craigslist like looking for a, a guy with long hair. I got like 10, 12 guys with beautiful hair, and I went out with, a sh- uh, I think, almost all of them. And uh, and you know what? At the end of them, I said to my girlfriend, Rachel, there, I said, I was looking at one guy and thinking, you'd be so handsome if you got a haircut. <laughs> I know, that's women for you. That's <laughs> did, women now, for did you, you. How many of the 12 did you sleep with? Um, I didn't. I wasn't such a, a whore on that one for some reason. <laughs> I wasn't. I remember it was unusual. Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> Very strange of me. Wasn't being a whore that week. It's yeah, so it was very weird. No, I, these were date states. Man, there was this one guy I met. Uh, he was so handsome, and I remember, you know, sometimes every so often I read that people would, you know, post the guy's photo. Some girl who got burned, maybe. I don't know if you ever saw that, like what? on Craigslist, saying "Don't go out with." Oh, this like girl. warning post. A warning post. I, do, ever seen I would that? see those here and there. Yeah. So. Yeah. There was this woman who did. Oh, there were two warning posts of both guys that I. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> one one that I actually didn't sleep with because I I could feel something was amiss and. What was what was amiss? What what, what were you uh, sensing? Well, she wrote a post that he's actually married and uh, he tries to get you to buy shit for him and all this stuff. Um, I did not buy him a goddamn thing. And I didn't know he was married. We we went out two times. And I did notice that, like, he was cheap. Like, he did not buy me a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Now, that's really cheap, you know? It was like, we took a, I think it was our second date. We took, like, a really long walk through Central Park, free. Okay. And then it started to rain. And I said, oh, shit, you know? And I was a Starbucks, like, across the way. And we jumped in, and um, I went into the ladies' room to, like, clean up. And when I came back, he just had his own coffee there. And I was like, 
wow, fuck you. Like, yeah. I, I'm not one of those chicks that expects you to, like, wine and dine them because I'm just, I'm an independent type sure. of person anyway. But, like, that's just rude, you know? It's just rude. We just came in from the rain, you mm. know? Like, but, you know, you could have said, hey, you know, I'm going to get a coffee. What do you want? I mean, were you going to spend more than five bucks on it? I mean, he was like, also on Craigslist. Free. Right? Yes, like- <laughs> that's true. That is true. You bring up a good point. The okay. other guy, though, so I, I got, she told me he was married. He's an asshole. The other guy was just a don't, this guy's an asshole okay. guy. I feel that one was, she probably wanted more. And then it, that guy was it was like a straight over like it came over his apartment like he was in a bathrobe like we went straight he was yeah, so lady. yeah oh i did have my lunch hour honey Is it, that's remember i texted i emailed you i used to fuck on my lunch hour lady. <laughs> yeah he was ready all of laney's clients cover your ears mama's don't gotta listen. talk <laughs> don't listen don't listen well, laney's about to talk about what she does with those big old lips of hers nah, okay everybody don't listen don't listen <laughs> don't put on some put on some little muffler ears muffler ears i had a really funny vision i was walking over here yeah and then like for some reason i because like I'm thinking, okay, like so Laney's got these crazy Craigslist stories, and the, the image of you like sucking a dick comes into my mind. Well, now it's I come also in every, I also wrote a book about yeah, it, well, right? Yeah, so, so, so but that's fun. in my head, sure. and, and then. I had this big laugh because, like, I, I imagine you <laughs> when you it, we were done popping it out of your mouth and going, "Okay, honey, are you good?" <laughs> I was like, "Is that Lainey Spicer blowjob?" <laughs> I, I am close to that. It is close to that. If you make a mess, I like am patting I, him on the I chest. I clean it up. No, I, I'm always. I've always cleaned it up. I go into the. If you're doing it at my home, I go like what, do a washcloth and clean it up. And- <laughs> That's very kind of i do that i do a cleanup thing well do you remember your first craigslist encounter yes yes and it was great it was great and you know what maybe if it had been bad i probably wouldn't have done it anymore okay but it was really great it was um i didn't put out any kind of ad uh i started craigslist because this ex of mine turned me on to it and he was like we dated dated a long time he was a real piece of shit and uh he really was and uh he used to write on the rants and raves a lot okay and uh there was what was and what was rants and raves was it that was you remember rants and raves i did not peruse it too much it seemed very angry so it was was so angry it was rants and raves was like uh Anything that you wanted to just get off your chest, like, I hate when, you know, women do this, or I hate when... Women do that. Seems that to be a lot of... Or, I hate when women know, blank. Or, I hate when women do verbs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So the first one, I just answered an ad, and it was uh, is a really cute guy who um, was looking for older women. He was cute. I never had the the the, like younger the youngest i ever dated was maybe four years younger than me mm-hmm. not nothing more than that how all. old-ish are you at this time mid 30s late 30s I'm, I'm in like i'm like 33 at this oh, point. Okay, okay yeah i'm 33 and uh you know and i said i've actually never done this but uh i thought your picture was really cute which it was and uh he was I just you know he's really Did he have really a picture cute. with a face or just like a fucking No, no, I would never have done that. See, that's never going to get with me. I need to see a face. Um I don't if I got to see what's attached to it, you know? Okay. Like a, and uh yeah, and what did we do? We um we ended up fucking on and off for years. Mm. That's how good it went. Like years afterwards. Like I forgot that how I even met him at one point because I think we had been fucking like six years like on and you know whenever and honestly he checks in with me every so often you know still with that husband of yours yeah well you know he called me he said you're still with that haircut he called me Ah. (laughs) he said are you still are you still with that haircut and i said yeah i am and he's like all right well he goes you know i'm here for you i was like okay honey i I appreciate it that was like almost 20 years ago yeah he's like yeah I'm still, I'm still waiting. I'm still yeah, sticking around. Yeah. Um. Do you? The first time y'all met up, was it like a straight to someone's place thing, or did you meet in a? We we had drinks, okay. in, but in my hood. And do you in my hood? So we were yeah. very close to my apartment. Yeah, and we went. I'd say we had no more than two drinks, and we went over to my place, and yeah, like I barely opened the door, you know, and we started like going at it, and um, 
you know, I was not in the best place uh, mentally because I'd just gone through all this crap with my ex and all this stuff. So what you're and, saying is you were being really good in bed that day. Oh. Mentally, I wasn't fully there, so I yeah. was awesome. It was not just that, but just like so appreciative yeah. of someone that just wanted light and breezy, someone that wasn't. Because this guy from the get-go, like my ex, like within the second time we ever had sex, like basically asked me to be his girlfriend and all this, you know, wanted claim on me right away. Mm -hmm. And it got really intense and bad really quickly. And, you know, you get caught up in this relationship and you're like, oh, shit, how do I get out of this? And whatever. So I was just, I, I, it was so nice to have like a good time with someone who's only 24, you know, not looking, you know, obviously most 24 year old guys are not necessarily looking for a long term relationship. Okay. And, um, yeah, we had a ball. We had a ball. Do you remember how you felt when you were like, approaching the date or waiting for him to show up because like you're sitting there being like or you're walking to the bar being like it's a craigslist thing i was just excited i mean of course yes i was like please god don't let that be like a bad picture like right. a, you know let him like as long i was like i just want him to look like the picture that's all okay. you know and it wasn't like he was a model you know it was just like just look like the picture that seems like such the anxiety these days yeah. is like will they look like the picture that's why people were saying can we do the facetime and i go what it's you know, if you're he, wasting so much time when you could meet have an adventure yeah like like enjoy a little yeah. bit of throw like okay if i show up and i'm not and you don't think i'm attractive you can leave in 20 yeah. minutes you can say like hey i just you know i'm not i'm not feeling it I that happened to me on the one bad Craigslist one. Uh, the guy was, I started talking to this guy. His picture is just like, again, you know, um, just a, a, a just averagely attractive mm. guy. And we had talked a little bit on and off. And I think, and then, like, I don't know, kind of sometimes people just disappear, you know, whatever, and you forget about it. And then he, he kind of boomerang back and said, Hey, I know what I haven't talked to you in a while. And he said, I was away. Um, I was out of the country and da da da. Do you want to meet? Uh, how about today? You know, and I said, Okay, sure, sure. And we met. Something told me to meet him at a Starbucks, not at a bar or anything. I just instinct, I don't know. But, but I, what, what does Starbucks indicate? Is it Starbucks, safer than a bar? Like, yeah, why? <laughs> Starbucks means you're not going to get laid. Oh. I, at least for me. Okay. For me. Like coffee, you know, like, I don't know. You, you get horny while they're drinking coffee and go in. I don't know. At least for me. Okay. For me. So I met him at a Starbucks. But if you're not going to fuck him, then why even meet up at all? I Well, I don't know. I don't know. That is a good question. I but, don't but know. Starbucks but Starbucks indicates maybe a that, safer. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. How about I'm not, sh I'm not sure. sure about you. Okay. Starbucks to me means I'm not sure about you. But bar is like, don't ba fuck it up and I'm going to fuck you. Bar means like if, if, <laughs> if, if you look like you say you look like and you act like a nice person. I will sit on your face. Yes. Yeah. Then okay. yes, we will. Then we will. Yes. I, w I hope so anyway. You know, <laughs> but uh, he's like, I almost leave. Like I waited there in front for like 20 minutes and it's like, this guy is a flake. He was a flake before. He's mm. a flake now. I'm going to leave. Just as I'm like about to, I was looking on my phone to make other plans or something, and uh, this guy shows up, and I hear like, but it's it's a totally different guy. How totally different? He's 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 Indi he's Hindi. Okay, what did you think he, he was? I thought he was a Caucasian guy, but okay. not that much actually. That much different than you look, by the way. Okay. Uh, hair's different, but you know, it's a white guy with you know. That was the picture. Pale blue eyes, uh, white pale skin. So he didn't even try hair. to get it to match. No. no, no. And I looked at him, and and you know, look, if it looked like that hot guy, like from Kumar and whatever, Harold and Kumar, that Indian guy, like I'd but Cal you know, Penn. Cal Penn. But yeah. even no, but even if he was Cal Penn, I'd be like, hey, Cal Penn, that's not the picture you sent me. Right. Like, what gives? You know. But I, I mean, he wasn't. He literally, and I'm gonna be t called a racist from up and down, but it is really the truth. He really did look like Apu okay. from The Simpsons. He really did. He had that stash. And I looked at him and I said, hello? You know, I'm still like, hey. And like, I didn't think it would. And he goes, I said, who are you? And he's like, he gave me this meaningful look. And I said, oh my God. And I said, absolutely not. Because <laughs> like, you're a whole other person. I, I just, I the words didn't even, I didn't even think. It was like I was on automatic pilot with my horror. Because it's just a different person. Look, even let's I feel like say, me submitting a picture of Michael B. Jordan and then showing yeah. up like, 
Still good? No? It, okay. <laughs> look, if I submitted a picture of Beyonce and you got me, you know, you should be like, what the fuck is this? Right. You know, you should and be. And you're just like, no, no, but we both have long hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing i i don't know who but um yeah so i leave immediately and you know what i remember distinctly calling up that guy that i said became a regular of mine the Mm -hmm. first guy from from cl and i said hey i said are you busy i said i just uh, i knocked off work earlier so i needed to like get the taste out Mm -hmm. this guy actually texted me he not texted he emailed me the next day and he said you are very beautiful thank you for not leading me on like, thank the, thank me for not leading him on. That's what he said to me. That was bad. That was bad. And but that's like, I have to say that's really the worst thing that ever happened uh-huh. on it. Um, you know, I do hear you know, got look, guys and a lot of women, you know, guys complain uh, because women are deceitful as much as men are. Sure. And I I heard I know from, what that high angle is supposed to be. Yeah, well, like this. this yeah, thing. when so when all, all the your fat pic- rolls back. Right, yeah. when all your pictures are from up here, what are you hiding? Yeah, mm. you're, you're hiding. I'm old and chunky. So yeah, <laughs> and then I'd rather you show me that you're old and chunky, so yeah. I can be like, well, is she old, chunky, and cute, or is she yeah, old, yeah. chunky, and not cute? Like, exactly. But show me what's going on here. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. At the time, I really didn't. This is before all the selfies, even. Uh-huh. You know, so the only pictures I had were pictures of me working. So I had penthouse pets around me. It's like you just you surrounded by. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. You know how people complain on Tinder about like the group photo and yeah. everyone assumes like it's the guy's like the least attractive of the group. But you're like, in my defense, I am surrounded by fucking porn stars. I would always, like, there was never a redhead in the pic. So I would always say I'm, I'm the, the redhead, redhead in the middle. You I'm never the said I'm the, the one middle. who's clearly not a porn star. <laughs> I didn't even say that. I didn't explain what it was. I didn't explain. People kept guessing I was a makeup artist. Okay. Like and I I I can see that I sure. I've I've seen makeup artists that kind of have my vibe I yeah. I can get that yeah but that's what but no I I used to submit those because I didn't have a picture of myself. Yeah. Were you only using Craigslist for just straight up like one on one you know F for M uh, posts or or did you get into anything a little off kilter? We mean like kinky. Well, like Craigslist for me, I never used for like dating dating and like I would rarely use it in a like. Hey, I'm just looking for one person to meet up to have some sex with. Usually I use Craigslist for the type of sex I might not run into, like just go into a bar that night. But I but but what would that kind of sex be? Like uh, well, I mean, like, let's see. Uh I have met up with a couple to watch them fuck. Oh, I have okay. I uh bukkake, gangbang okay, stuff, okay. threesomes with a couple. Yeah. Um, you know, something maybe that was like a kinkier thing. Okay. Uh, I got I got catfished once, sorta on like a gangbang that never had where the chick didn't show uh, up. That was awkward. Was there a bunch of dudes there and she didn't show up? Laney, this was the first attempted group sex thing I ever yeah, did. Yeah. So what happened? I I go to it was on tw- the apartment was on Twenty Third Street. I text my friend Katie because Katie was like in college. She was the person who, if I was doing something weird on Craigslist. I would send her like an address, a phone number, a picture. Like, just in case. I didn't even yeah. have to tell her what I was doing. I would yeah. just be like, she knows I'm doing something weird. Yeah. And she knows that if I don't show up to the dining hall in the morning, they did it. Right. right? That's That was always my strategy. Smart. So I go to this apartment in Chelsea. I'm 19 or 20 years old. Okay. I'm probably 19 years old. And I go up there. And now the scene was this woman wanted to um, do this like <laughs> – she wanted to walk into the apartment and catch – she wanted to do this like incest role, group sex role play thing. Okay. So she wanted to walk into the apartment yeah. that would be propped open and catch her boys jerking off to porn. And then she was going to punish us all by sending us to the bedroom yeah. and making us have sex with her. Oh, that's kind of hot. I kinda can hot. get that. Yeah, I get yeah. behind that. Sure. But yeah. so, so I show up. That's hot. And I previously had never seen other penises in person before. Yeah. I'm sh- yeah I, I never had group 19, showers. Sure. Yeah, you know, the locker room was not as f- free balling for in yeah. my experience. So I get there, and the dudes whose place it was, like, he's like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, whatever. And there's like two other guys, and we all like just like take our pants off, and he puts porn on, and we start like trying to jerk off the porn. Uh, I'm on this leather couch. I'm on the far left side. There's like a guy over here, and host is over in that corner. There's another dude like you know, a foot or two next to yeah. me on this couch, and. 
I am trying so hard to like get hard in front of these dudes watching sure, porn. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, I don't know. I think after like 30, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm just kind of like, hey, where's the check? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and this is pre iPhone. This is before iPhones were ubiquitous. Like, okay. I saw it a flip phone. Most people saw it a flip sure, phone. Sure. But this guy had like a Blackberry. So he's like periodically checking the email. Because yeah. we were doing this all through Craigslist email thing. And remember, it was proxy email. You don't even yeah. really have a real no, email address. No, it's not. It yeah, was like a bunch pro- of numbers sure. at craigslist.org. Yeah, still is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he keeps being like, I was not seen from her. Okay, I sent her an email, whatever. We didn't have her phone number. And just like, I, I don't know, eventually after like 45 minutes, I kind of called it a day. And I, like, I was like, hey, guys, I think I'm going to go because like I don't think she's coming. No. And I don't want to just like sit here jerking off with a bunch of dudes. Yeah. It's just like not my thing. So I went to the bathroom and I finished because I'm not a monster. Aww. I was Look, I, I, I was jerking off for 45 minutes. Yeah, like, you got to finish. I'd yeah, like to finish. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I got finish. dressed and I fucking left. And then oh, apparently- man. She shoots us an email the next day, like, hey, everyone, sorry, it's unhappy with my <laughs> husband. But then I'm like, is that real? Or is this guy just, did he just want to jerk off with some dudes? That could have been very well it. it could, I'd say it's a toss up. Very but much toss up. But I feel the only reason I feel it wasn't because of the dudes was I think you would have been hit on. Or something you would have felt. You would make, yeah, like I feel you like you felt a creepiness of that factor in the air. Yeah, unless he truly just wanted to like have jack off bros. He, I just, I, I think he also like. I don't know. I when you I got, have, it was his apartment. So when he got there, did he like? Did he offer you any like water, or anything to drink? No, no. He was anything? like he's acted the way most times I go to a weird group sex thing, anonymous thing. Yeah. He acted like everything was on the up and up. But you never know. You don't know. I choose to believe that, like, something did happen with her husband that day. But, like, it's also possible this dude just tricked us into jerking off with him. It, it could uh, go so. either way. Did anyone decide to leave when you left? Or I did anyone leave I was, before you? When I was getting dressed, I, they started to feel... I. They, it you seemed just, like they were also going to give up. Yeah, sometimes like, you're just waiting for the the first person yeah. that calls it, you know, a night and... Uh, all that. What were the other dudes like? Were they young guys like you? No, I was clearly the youngest. I mean, the oh. oldest dude, the guy whose place it was, he was probably in his 40s, and the other two dudes were like probably in their 20s or 30s, something like that. Oh, man. That's a man. When I was 19, I could not have handled I would have gotten so scared. I mean, you know, because of being the youngest, especially. Yeah. You know, like, what the fuck are these guys going to do to me you well, know well in the beginning i'm more like nervous like oh like i'm not hard yet like i'm tugging yeah i'm like and i'm like and like real i'm like super not hard so i'm like actually tugging it trying to be like wake up yeah wake up. like the other dudes are getting hard you gotta get hard too and uh and yeah it was just a fucking weird was that was any, my first one did anyone say anything to you about you having trouble or anything no or i think everyone they was gave tr- everyone everyone gave it their own privacy is what i'm saying so. yeah i don't think there's a lot there wasn't a lot of eye contact going on uh, so it this was legit I this fi- was legit at least among the three visitors yeah. for sure yeah. like we, there was definitely a lot of trying to stare at the flat screen tv yeah um yeah. and keep our focus up there oh man but yeah people do like, there are a lot of married people on craigslist and really? on, on the apps in general and i said that to my girlfriends right away when they started uh you know when they became single i said look you have to know that half these guys are going to be married mm. or with a girlfriend either one if you don't care, that's, you know, if it's just sex, blah, who, you know, mm-hmm. I have my own set of rules. It's like, if I'm single, I don't care what other people yeah. do. You know, it's not my life, it's your life, and right. that's it. But I said that a lot. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the guys that, I'm sure half of them at least had a girlfriend, uh, for sure, I do. Um, but yeah, but there is a lot of, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of women who are like, yeah, fuck my husband. I'm going to go on Craigslist and blah, blah, blah. I'll show him, you know. Yeah. I'll show I, him. I hooked up with women who had partners while on Craigslist. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just, it's not my business. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why I meant by like, yeah. why, you know, the purpose of using it. it was like, I wanted to, I was going to try to get encounters that I might not normally run into there. Yeah. And then I would go on dates like in the normal way I find people for dates. So I was curious like so, yeah. what, what your usage was like. I... Well, if I ever went for anyone specific, it was I went through a little time where I got really into being submissive. And um, I had met someone on social media, not on Craigslist, who uh, on MySpace, so that'll date you. Wow. Yeah. It was a much older man than me. And uh, he, he just asked me out on a regular date. And, you know, once 
I realized what he was into and he's into being dominant and you know he knew what he said that I was the perfect girl to get into being submissive he said you're the perfect candidate because you have a you're very strong you manage people you know you have self-confidence and all this stuff but those are the exact kinds of people who will find it very therapeutic to just let, let go, go. And he said, you're going to love it, Lainey, I swear to you. Like, had you give done, it a try. had you submitted much never, before? Never, It never submitted before. I'd been with submissive men before, for sure, mm -hmm. but I'd never, ever, uh, ever done that. So um, he did, he was great at it. I loved it. So we would set it up. Like, what so, happened? What'd y'all do? He, uh, you know, we went out like twice and then like we... He, I think he broke me in just regular sex first, you okay. know, with sex. And then um, he came over and he told me, like, I want you to take out um, a pair of your uh, your your uh, pantyhose or your stockings. Take out your stockings. All things that he could tie me up with. Different okay. things from around the house. I remember him told me that. And, um, yeah, he tied me up. And, um, you know, he would be watching, like, sports on TV. And I had to sit you know tied up and oh he did the thing where he's tying you up and then ignoring you for a while <laughs> no he would like he'd smoke a cigarette like we both smoked and he'd like give me like right. he'd go down and give me a hit and whatever or he would just play with my body right. uh, but to the point while watching the game though no not the whole time <laughs> no that was just one of the okay because that no, reminds no. me that reminds me of bukake i went to where there was like oh a, really there was a playoff someone put but while we were waiting someone for the special the lady to <laughs> We were waiting for the special lady to come out. So before that, like the host, like the husband, he put the game on. It was like a Steelers playoffs wow. game. And like some of us were like, oh, we're watching the game. Oh, he's got to turn it off. Oh, yeah, because we have to come on his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you got so into the game. Right, right. No, no, it was that. But, you know, it was also just me not knowing what he was going to do. I mean, he How'd did. How'd that feel? It was very liberating. Yeah. It was. I've never done that before. And. You know, again, he was older, but he really, he was a really cool guy. He was a music producer and a mm. musician and very successful. And he was very self assured. And um, he, uh, what else? And then, yeah, he spanked the shit out of me for sure. I mean, he spanked to leave marks on yeah. purpose. You know, he said, I want you to, when you go to the gym tomorrow, I want you to walk around that gym naked so everybody sees your marks on your body. Like the locker room? Yeah. Yeah. He said, no, not walk across the Nautilus machine. I don't know. I, 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 I would but, just say that yeah. I need to know which gym you it's go to gym. and then <laughs> I'm going to switch. This actually was oh, so embarrassing. I used to go to Lucille Roberts back then. Don't shame me. But, you know, these guys, uh, unfortunately, they giveth and they taketh away, you know, um, he just I think he just got off on me being like a novice to this mm -hmm. and. I think he just wanted to keep pushing and pushing. And, you know, at one point he wanted me to like be on all fours and go to like a, a sex place with him and be his dog and, you know, collared and all that stuff. And I said, absolutely that was a little too much not. for you. It was just, you know what? Honestly, I was like, if I see one person I know, because I, I know people in me, you know, like yeah. uh, I used to throw a, 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 a dom party at penthouse like every month. Mm. You know, a pro dom party. That's all I needed was for one of those schmuckles to see me there, and you know, I didn't want anyone to know anything about my love life. And I said, especially if uh, the submissive stuff. Yeah, 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 it would not be a good look. And and he just honestly just got bored of me and blah blah blah. That's yeah. it. No, it's the truth. He just got bored. And but then I was like, you know, I got a taste. And you get kind of yeah. like a junkie, and you're sort of like, I want to find another guy to do this. But, you know, you can't re – when you have it in your mind of what you want, it's hard to replicate exactly. But I did answer a few that was, like, about domination yeah. and stuff. Um, did you wa yeah. did you walk around the locker room to show yes. it off? And do you remember – what did that – did people see? Definitely. And what My did it feel like? My skin is so pale. You can see if there's like, you know, some like paddle marks on my ass and stuff. And uh, he used a couple of different yeah. things and his hand prints and all this stuff. And uh, What did it feel like to expose yourself? I like was that? wondering if people thought I was being abused, abused, which I did not <laughs> want anyone to think. That's why I remember telling him, I said, I hope they think that I'm not like a victim of any so kind. I think it, it, it depends on like how you walk around the locker room with it. Like if you do it and then like someone looks at you and you make eye contact them and then you smirk yeah you're like 
Yeah. Well, I definitely was had a happy look on my it. face. Yeah, I, def- <laughs> I didn't look sad sure. or anything like that. So you how know. did you start to pursue being a submissive more after that first encounter? I would I would answer ads with guys looking for that. Still Craigslist. Still, yeah, still just, of course. It's not on it, your match.com it profile. It works for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I was nowhere near. My sister had bugged me to do match for so many years. And, and once you were done with Craigslist, she's like, oh, I guess I'll give yeah, that a Yeah, I guess I guess, you know, this is done, so I guess I'll try. But, Do you remember yeah. any Craigslist tropes, like going through all those ads? What do you mean? So, like, for example, I remember the trope of, like, um, people who who clearly were, like, not – didn't know what they were doing but were trying to fit into Craigslist. So they would put D&D and disease-free. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's yeah, supposed yeah, to be yeah, drugs yeah. and disease-free, so yeah. DDF, but people would be like – DDF and disease free. I'm like, but that tells me you don't know what DDF stands for. Yeah. Because that's already in the DDF. So like like there's like little intricacies yeah. of like Craigslist culture. No, I was actually the idiot that I never used to write like that ever. Okay. When I either because I either I answered a lot as much as put out a lot. You okay. know, I probably answered more ads than I did post. Do you remember what years you were posting? Like Yeah. It was uh, 2003. Until? Oh, shit. Like, until, probably like 2011, on and off. Laney. Yeah. I, were you in New York City or only in LA? I was in New York. Yeah, yeah, Laney, yeah. I, may have, I may have seen your post. It's possible. Why didn't we, you fuck me? I, What's the problem? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> this might be one of the few moments where I regret like not having a video content set up. <laughs> <laughs> the moment where Laney Spicer says, Billy, then why didn't you fuck me? Why didn't you fuck me? You I could use like... that. You could use that clip for the, the, the teaser. <laughs> right. The teaser for this interview. Why didn't you fuck me? Why didn't you answer? Why didn't you answer to my response? Why well, I probably did I try know. to fuck you. I probably responded to any, because I would specifically search like younger men. I would search like a routine of searches. I would do like F for M, younger men. Yeah. Um, and I would do the, the acronym differences. So I would run through MW because also I realized when I was young, oh, if I'm okay with at least another dick present, yeah, I can answer more ads and therefore increase the chances of getting my dick sucked. True, true, true. <laughs> so I would answer, true. I would search MW for M, MW for MM, W for MM, the very rare but yeah. amazing WW for M. Yes, yes, very rare, very but rare. once in a while, I, I there's saw lesbians those. looking for a sperm donor or something. You know, every <laughs> so often I would like I was thinking like maybe I should just answer like a girl's ad just for shits and giggles, like. Okay. But I never believed there was really women on there. They I were didn't. There? I didn't. I for some reason didn't trust the process with that. <laughs> I thought it was just a whole bunch of horny guys, because they would always say the a lot of the posts said like no guys please or whatever, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I just um, not not because I was really into girls. I just was like, hey, I you know you get so adventurous. You're like, oh, maybe I'll try this. I'll try. Well, that. the W for W and ads like those. They would say no guys, please, because because guys would do the whole. I know you're like a chick looking for a chick, but like, have you considered me a man? Right, right. And right. they all think they're special, so they all. So it's them just right. trying to get them to be like, please, fucking no. <laughs> well, you know what? Recently, now Craigslist. For the show, I was doing a MILF, uh, a mil- the hottest MILF contest yeah. for in honor of Mother's Day that weekend. Right. And I put out an ad in Craigslist. And, um, you know, I got a bunch of responses. And I got responses from this woman who really, like, looked like the dream MILF as far as I was concerned. You know, she's, like, blonde, pretty, nice body. But, you know, in her 40s and mm-hmm. Whatever, and uh, we texted back and forth, and uh, she's like, "It sounds so great," and da da da. And I said, "All right." I said, "I need to. I want to talk to you on the phone." You know, I would always talk to. Still, like I call everybody to yeah. make sure you're real and all this stuff. And I called her, and it was a guy's voicemail. I've had that happen too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oof. And I got so pissed, like you fucking wasted like an hour of my time, you bitch, you know, or you <laughs> asshole, or whatever. And what you did, because we're texting on and off for like an hour, you know, and you like it was a dude the whole time, like he was never gonna show up. Uh, what do you think one of your wilder Craigslist encounters was? I don't, I don't know if they were really wild. I mean, one guy, I thought. This one guy, I didn't think he wanted me to do this, but he wanted me to uh, shave his head. 
I don't really know if like any of them were wild. I mean, they I just wanted know. me to like shave their head. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if that's, that's pretty wild. fucking weird. Is that? It's weird. I don't know if it's wild. Okay, Is I can say weird, wild, nuts. He wanted I, you me know, to shave synonyms. his head. It was weird because nothing in his ads said anything about that. He was a personal trainer. He lived yeah. in Jersey. Okay, easy access. You know, he came over really very Jersey, but nice, handsome guy and. Uh, and you know, first they'll, you know, usually with the kinky people, they'll like show you that they can have sex normally first. A right. lot of them, that's how they suck you in. <laughs> and, uh, and you're like, oh, I had it. And they do it well. You're like, this is great. Okay. You're like, well, you sure? I'll see you again. And then it's like, Lainey, can we, you know, when I come over, can I, uh, I want, I'm bringing like, uh, do you ever, uh, you know, what is that? The, uh, the electric razor, I yeah. guess. And, uh, he said, I'd like you to shave my head while telling me what a small penis I have. And he said that's what he got. And he started, and I said, what the fuck? And he started sending me um, uh, links of those websites. This is a sexual thing. Small penis humiliation. S- no, he was showing me the head oh, shave, he's- too. No, about head shaving. Were they just head shaving they videos? Were. Or were they head shaving small penis humiliation? No, he, he included that. He's like, I'm a pioneer. I'm he trying to mix the genres. He mixed the two genres. <laughs> 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 he included that. And... Uh, I um, you know, I can't shave anyone's head. I can't. I couldn't do it. I just um, he had really nice hair. I thought it was ridiculous for him to shave. And we know you like your blonde hair. I do like hair, you know. And uh, were you able to do the small penis humiliation? I tried. I did. I did. But the thing is, he didn't have a small penis. He really didn't. I, I I met one guy. Oh God, I did meet one guy in Craigslist. He's such. And you know, we dated like for a month or two. We definitely did. He had the tiniest penis I've ever seen in my life. Okay. And but you know what? He made me squirt. And that's why I kept and no one ever did that before. He was a guy with a small penis who knew his limitations mm-hmm. and but and studied up on other things. Now when you say like small, like how small are we talking about? Oh, this. I'm so, hard. so hard. Like hard this. is the pinky. It's we, we're holding up pinkies. Yeah, we're holding up pinkies. Okay. But then he's like, I'm gonna get some other skill set. And is that what you would say to a dude with small penis listening? Hey, you got you got a dick yes. that like is so small it's just going to there's limitations of what you can do we fucking. Did, we did fuck. We right, did. but there's limitations uh, but, of how much you can do that. You know what? If I what I learned from that guy is a he he didn't make it the elephant in the room, right. which I really appreciated. He, he didn't was, make it a big deal. He didn't make it a big deal. He's like, I know my dick is small, so blah blah blah. You know, it was very uh, cool. He was ex actually military guy, yeah. and uh, he was very. And I will say, um, if also uh, one good thing about a guy with a small penis is because there's so little blood to get down there, he can fuck like five times a night. Easy. Oh, shit. Because there's not much work involved, you know? It's not much blood has to go down there. So his refractory period was like 10 minutes tops. And we would go out again. And I actually... You can... you Look, the vagina, you don't really need all that space. You don't. It's true. You don't really don't. And I definitely was able to come, you know, uh, with with his dick. But, um, he made, but he made sure to quickly introduce that. Sure. In, about the other the skill sets, his, yeah. yeah, his squirting, and uh, I never thought of even doing it. I never thought I. I was just like, I just, all of a sudden I said, "Oh my god!" And he's like, he said, "You don't have to pee. Don't worry." Yeah, <laughs> like he knew what was happening. He goes, "Don't worry, you're not peeing. Don't worry, don't worry, yeah. don't worry. Just re- relax, relax, relax." And yeah, and no one's done it since. With the small penis, like yeah. with, with something like that, you know. Do you prefer if they disclose that in the ad or is it like wh- when do you want to know what he's working with? It's hard to say. Like, look, I, I always try to keep myself in a guy's position. It's like, what do you say over dinner? Like, by the way, my dick is small. Like, you don't want to, you know, especially if you're a really good looking guy and mm-hmm. stuff like it's I don't know. But I think what he did is close to the best thing you can do. You yeah. know, um, we fooled around and I saw it and. Before I even thought of anything, he just immediately launched into this taking care of me first, and it worked. And and we did it. We like I said, we did have sex. We sick. did, we did. But then there was another guy on Craigslist who had like I called his dick Mount Everest because his dick really looked like a mountain. It was the weirdest penis, and not just so huge, but it's just like triangle, like like a, like thick, and it gets yeah, narrower and, and narrower. Was, yeah, it's like the head's tiny. The head is tiny, like this. I'm doing a little circle. Yeah. It's like a bad dragon. 
And Dildo. Yeah, it was like a <laughs> and he took that out. That guy yeah. was gorgeous. He was a soap opera actor. Mm. He was really handsome. And he was such a, a gentleman in other ways. Like, he always took me to, like, great wine bars. And, you know, uh, I would talk to him about books I was writing. And he'd give me suggestions. Really nice guy. But this dick, I just, like, no. I tried and tried. I could only manage it on top. Manage it. Like, yeah. when he tried to do me from behind, I was like, absolutely. No, take it out. Take it out. You're killing me. Um, and, uh, it was just limiting because of that for me. Right. And also he obviously, and he always say, I'd say, I always told him like, I'm not even operating it in my usual way because your dick is so big. Like right. you don't even know what I can do, man. You know, like <laughs> I'm not, I, I tell him, he goes, are you kidding? Lane? You're doing amazing. What do you mean? You're doing so great. And I was like, I don't even think I'm, I can barely suck your dick, man. I said, yeah. I feel bad. You know, I feel bad. And he's like, at least you're trying. At least you're like, they obviously went through this a lot. Oh yeah. Oh my God. And then, and then he always wanted, we had to always finish the same way. Like I can't sing when things start to feel like a ritual after uh. a while. Uh, like he always finished the same way which was like suck on my balls while i jerk myself off and look at your ass in the mirror you don't have to do that every time he did it every time but i guess it's again probably because he's so big uh-huh. that he probably trained himself to just get off with his hand because oh. i don't know i'm guessing but um, but I felt he was a nice guy, so I lied and told him I got back together with my old boyfriend. And uh, he was like, really? That's such a shame. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> and I said, yeah. I said, I'm sorry. I said, you know, you're a cool guy. I said, but yeah, I got to get, you know, because we weren't seeing each other like a couple right. anyway. You know, it wasn't like a big deal. But uh, it's, it's yeah. funny you said about the head shaving guy, because uh, so I've my I'm of the opinion that Reddit has really filled in a, a, the gap that Craigslist left. I didn't know that. So, by the way, fill me in on that, because I didn't know that Reddit is... Ta- How has Reddit taken over that? So, it it was there, but I think more people have gone to it because Craigslist isn't the option it okay. once was. Reddit ha- has a hyper-specificity to it. Um, the, sub- the personal subreddits can be as broad or not, like... R for R is the Redditor for Redditor. That's the most broad one. It's not even okay. location specific. Right. But then like you can get, there's like dirty R for R, which is R for R, but dirty. Uh, but then yeah. you got locational ones. And why R for R? Um, some of them are getting weird. So like NYC R for R has been closed, but now there's R for R NYC. I know I'm also confused already. Yeah. Uh, but then there's, you can get hyper focused on say the action. So there's random acts of blowjob and there's right, random right. acts of muff dive. Just oh, mass- wow. matching pussies and people want to lick them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's BDSM personals ones. There's you know the Florida one. There's the the LA R for R. There's ones that are there's a um, cuddle buddies. Cuddle buddies is on there, sure, of course, right? yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There's there's yeah. glory R slash glory hole locations. Yeah. Yeah. People who got a glory hole or or are looking for a glory hole. So you can get your hookups kind of specific or at least geographically specific. I had I swear I had no idea that Reddit was the new Craigslist. Well, I just think, yeah, you know, no I think That's it, great. I'm glad. Yeah, it, I'm glad. It had been there. Like I said, yeah. I just think more pe- more and more people go there because they probably would have usually gone to Craigslist. Yeah. So so I bring it up to say I see on the NYR for our sub right. all the time. There's always an M for M ad, and it's a dude who is looking for a straight guy to come over and have his head shaven. Wow. So, so I'm it is a like, fetish then. Okay. I it's had no idea sort of until you said that yeah. there was a fucking head shaving guy. Yeah, and, and he did send me <laughs> links of this. Like, this is his gay brother. This yes, is his, this is his gay brother. <laughs> these two dudes, super into like... Oh, head shaving yeah oh my one, God. one wants his head shaven the other one wants to, to shave, shave. Head. i'm glad the gay guy wants to shave that's cool, <laughs> that's cool. yeah that's cool so but, you can uh, find yeah. anything so if you i have could. to recruit for a gangbang i usually go to reddit so you do that good i'm glad because you know like i said at the top of the show um from what i hear like you know tinder or hinge or whatever people do now um i don't know it doesn't sound like a Maybe maybe it's just my friends, which could be. Uh, my I told I I laughed. I told my one of my my girlfriend Robin. I said, uh, 
I think she had she had some sort of booty call or something, and we were talking about it. And then I thought of what I did, and I said to her, I, I said, I guess I'm just a slut, Rob. <laughs> you know, and she laughed. She goes, no, no. She goes, that's fine for you. And she goes, that's fine. I don't mean to slut shame you. But, oh, wait, I did remember one other wild thing. Oh. And I remember that, because I actually told David recently, and it was about me not being a... You know, David's more the nester out of the two of us, mm-hmm. and he like if if David didn't live here, this apartment would look really bad right now. Let's he uh, cleans and all this shit. Okay, and I thought I, you meant because there'd just be sex toys like no, no, it'd be like me- there would be, but they'd be like it'd be like messy. But I told him that I met this uh, private pilot on Craigslist. He was okay. a pilot, and uh, he also he wanted to clean my house, do chores fix things, all that nude, totally naked. Well, I told him what to do, and um, I wore an apron and heels and uh, told him, like, you know, and he told me, I want you to relax. He said, if you want to talk on the phone with your friends or whatever, you yeah. don't have to pay attention to me if you don't want to. But it was going to end in sex, you know, because okay. my thing was like... You're like, what do I get out of this? Yeah. Besides I mean, a clean apartment. That, that the only reason I think I agreed was because that apartment <laughs> idea really got me excited, and I had been doing these monthly parties with penthouse variations that were pro dom, and I would hear got friendly with some of the doms, told me like, "Oh, do you want to borrow my slave?" If I told my slave that he has to clean your house, like yeah. he'll clean your house, and I was like, "Yeah," but you know, then I got I'm like, "Okay," and uh, yeah, he came. Well, no, we met for drinks first. I remember that. I always want to meet someone first before I decide to bring you sure. in my home. And uh, yeah, he uh, he told took off all of his clothes, and I had him lift a bunch of heavy ass milk crates to the top of like my shelf, and he cleaned and uh, he made my bed, and I said I want it made perfectly, like I want it super tight, like a mm. hotel room tight, yeah, you know, and all this stuff, and then we ended up just doing it in the kitchen. <laughs> And uh, because you don't want to ruin the bed he just made, no, of course no. not. He boxed the corners, no, of course not. That was like mine, yeah. And I had changed the sheets and everything, like, yeah. no, I didn't want to spoil that. And uh, yeah, that was fun. But what was it like while he was doing the cleaning? It, it was not at first, I was like, I made myself a drink, and I remember having a cigarette. And uh, I was just at first, I thought, do I need to talk? And then I thought, no, I don't. He just, it's cool. I was like, wow, this is cool. I'm not the... And um, I did some work things. I had a BlackBerry back then, and I did sure. like was working. And uh, I think I took a call from my sister or somebody. And uh, and I said that to her. I remember my sister is the other only person that knew what I was doing. And I said to my sister, there's this hot guy with like a big heart on cleaning my apartment naked. And she said, yeah, I gotta go now. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> and she said I'm not going to be a part of it. I, I actually think these are learning experiences, and you know, through promiscuity, honestly, you learn a lot about people. Yeah. You learn a lot about yourself, and you know, you learn that sometimes it is like that moment. You're right. Yeah. You know, it is like you know, like I've said to even my own clients you know it's like not every guy you can go on a date with is going to be your husband okay yeah. like relax and not relax. every sexual relationship has to be this big long thing it can right. be good yeah and brief Absolutely. that they're, they're neat. i mean not all of them but like there should be space where there's some things that are good for the one to three times you did it yeah and but that's all it needed to be and it's yeah. and it's great and just because they didn't keep doing it doesn't make it less great i had a one night stand that i didn't know was gonna be a one night stand and we both mutually agreed amazing sex we did love play uh where we just That's like sad. pretended uh i was just out of my relationship with my ex megan and she was i think as son so we both agree we we're gonna be emotionally reckless so <laughs> while we were doing all this crazy hot sex did multiple rounds and this and that yeah. and this but like we did the like we were like in well, like i'm insider and like we're saying i love you to each other wow we know it's not real right, right but for the right. night we're gonna do it and it felt real for the night and then the next day we both knew what that was and then we'd never hooked up again but we both were like not because the sex wasn't great just because like that, that's that was that it. was that's was good you know, I didn't know it had a label like that. I don't think it does. It, I, th- what did I just you call, call it? I called it Love Play. Love Play. No, no, like, no. I believe look, if that. it doesn't if it's not a thing, just put the name of it and then no. put play and now it's a thing. Cuz I, I re- <laughs> when you said that I realized that I was with someone who did Love Play and and 
um, we'd be doing it. And I know he wasn't in love with, I just, I knew he wasn't, yeah. you know, but he'd be like, all of a sudden he's like, am I, am I your fella, Laney? Am I your fella? And I was like, <laughs> am I your fella? Yeah, that's from Jersey. Well, close. <laughs> am I your yeah. good fella? Am I, am your, I your good yo, fella? Yo, yo, Laney, you know? <laughs> yo. <laughs> but uh, he was, he's like, or he's like, he's like, do you love me? Do you love me? And one time I was just like, yeah, I love you as much as you love me. I remember saying that. And he goes, well, of course I love you. How could I not love you? He's like, tell me, please tell me, tell me, tell me. You know, as he got off on it, I was like, yeah. I love you. I swear you like came, boom, like that. Lainey, before we go, yeah. you know, what is, what is. Love play. <laughs> love play. Remember that. Love that. Um, before we go, yeah. what is an element of the Craigslist culture that you hope continues to find its way into other parts of, you know, sex and dating life for people. I, I just think the adventure of it, mm -hmm. you know, um, what, what is the worst thing about being monogamous? It's not actually the, you know, the, the one dick, the one pussy, the one it's the adventure ends in a lot of ways. Wow. Um, I mean, you learn to have adventures then with your partner, of course, you know, and that's, you know, if you found the right person, then you have adventures with that person. But, um, I really wish, I hope the adventure, cause I feel when, when I said friends of mine tell me that the apps are a bunch of like time wasters and da da da, no one wants to meet in person and, you know, or they just want to sext or they want to, you know, uh, exchange pictures and just jack off to your pictures or right. whatever. It makes me sad. It does. It's like, oh my God, like people need to be touched and people need to meet other people and, and, you know, experience other people. And even if you're not, it doesn't have to be like you're finding your one and only. I mean, if you do great, like that's wonderful, but you know, uh, why wait? Like I, I, I'm just not one of those people. Like, why wait for the phone to ring when you can, you know, make your own things happen? And I, I really hope that comes back because, look, I even knew women who they they called them in Craigslist dinner whores. That was yep. the dinner whores. <laughs> you remember that? That was a big Craigslist. I never thing, heard that that whores. label, but I knew exactly what you were talking about. That was that I mean, was th talked th about. That's definitely carried on the Tinder, where it's like I have five dates a week because that's five dinners paid for. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I remember reading that a lot during my Craigslist time about dinner whores, not looking for dinner whores. Not looking. And then, you know, there were, there were always guys that are looking for ski bunnies, you know, the guys who well, just want to do a bunch of coke with you. Lainey, we could have done a whole other episode just about and the terminology yes, the term and the vocab. I will leave you yeah. with this. With this, my favorite vocab What's thing yours? from Craigslist okay. was. I mean, this wasn't like a Craigslist thing, but I saw it in yeah. a Craigslist ad. I was looking for a happy ending massage chick as junior college, and I see an ad, and it was the most brilliant way of ever. This is why I. It was the moment where I was like, if I ever do grad school, I'm going to do communications of sex workers on the internet, right? Cause right. It's fucking brilliant. She said she uh, she was advertising her services, and she said. I sing both Billy Joel and Frank Sinatra. It's supposed to mean something. Okay. Oh, yeah. I sing both Billy Joel and Frank Sinatra. I have no idea what that means. What she mean? offers blowjobs and full service. What? Right? Oh, wow. Right? Wow. Right? Billy Joel and Frank Sinatra. Wow. Right? That's pretty good. I dare yeah. law enforcement to prosecute that one. They won't. Amazing. They won't. Amazing. So oh, or like, <laughs> wait, wait. There's another one that uh, paid me uh, 300 roses. Well, the roses the thing. Roses. I mean, come on. That was Ira. But then you yeah. had all the drug, ski bunny, ski rock bunny. climbing, stuff like that. Yeah, rock climbing. Yeah. Oh, I learned shit. a new one recently, Tina. What's that? That's uh, the... Uh, meth. Oh yes, that's right. That is Tina. You're right. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, it's you know. Yeah. So there, there was a whole. Yeah. There's a whole thing going on in the Craigslist for just in vocab, but you know, another time. Clearly, clearly, uh, we'll see what... we could go on forever. <laughs> but I really do. I hope you know Craigslist. If someone who works there is. I'll listening, DM Craig. He follows me. Uh, well, you know, I, we'll I, you know, even though I will not be uh, doing that anytime soon. Um, it's okay. He's, it's okay. He's not in the room. You can, you can say it. It's fine. I'm not doing that. No, uh, I I do. I want. I yeah. think. I think it's something. And I honestly think it's something everyone should try. Yeah. 
you know, try it, try, see how you feel about doing this, meeting people you don't know. And be safe, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I don't want you to get murdered. Text or, your Katie in your yeah, life. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, with mine, it was Rachel. And, and I didn't even, she would be bugging me. She's like, where are you going right now? You know, I want to know in case you don't come back. And, sure. Or my sister. But um, I, I think it's, you know, I, I think it's sad, you know, people stay home now to way too much. And mm-hmm. it's not even the pandemic at all. It's just, and in fact, during the pandemic, I was thinking like, wow, if I was single during this pandemic and there was Craigslist, I'd be like... Man, my my pussy be sore. Like, what else would there be to do? You know, you go on Craigslist and like keep my mask on or something. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. You know, like it's a shame. It's a shame. I hope yeah. it comes back. Well, Lainey, if people want to follow you and yep. and what you're doing on the internet <laughs> and and keep a lookout for your Craigslist keep ads, a look at. where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and. Twitter at Miss Laney. That's M I S S L A I N I E. Fantastic. Um, I'm so glad to have had you back. It was fun. Thanks for clearing up that you don't hate me. I, you know, <laughs> I, you I know, I was buzzed, but I wanted to, you know, I just, for people that <laughs> might, maybe some of your listeners are going to be like, you're such a cunt, Laney. I see you. <laughs> bothering billy and being a bitch to him and then you go on his show like fuck you no that's not true i like billy very much but i i i need to bust his balls sometimes i just do i need to i need to if you're shirtless i need to say something i need to yeah, and, and the thing you can say is billy you look really hot I I never say you don't look hot. I don't insult. I never say you look unattractive ever. It's just you know. I just don't know any guys who do that. Sure. You know. It, it, you literally, Lainey, You literally know like all the guys who do that. I don't. <laughs> I just. Job. I don't know. No. I, you're the only you're guy. Like the I know only guy who, who doesn't that. get paid by Vivid. Okay. It's right. Like, <laughs> I just don't know people who do. I say that to women too. There was this one woman on Facebook who was always showing like all this shit. You know, like barely like of the rules, but. And and believe me, you are you are a shitload of tra- more attractive oh, than this woman by thank far. Thank you so much. But I couldn't. I'm help. glad I'm a pretty woman to you. Uh, I you are much better looking than this woman. And I wrote on under one of her pictures. Um, I'm just curious, why do you do this? Um, are you in the industry? And she got went nuts on me, like. And she said, "How? Da- why are you supposed to feel comfortable by my? Are you saying you feel uncomfortable by my body? So I feel comfortable with your body. I don't uh-huh. want you to think I'm. That's why I'm bringing it up. I'm going to clip that audio and play it on. Loop. I feel comfortable with your body. Just over and over. Yeah. Me to sleep. Uh, Lainey, this was super fun. It was fun honey. And Thanks why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Bye, everybody. <laughs> Lainey, who would have known? I had no idea she was such a wonderful slut. Oh my gosh. Lainey Spicer, everybody. Again, if you want to hear her first Man Whore podcast appearance, scroll way the fuck back to episode 187. And again, if you want to hear Anissa, my, uh, my, my nurse from my kidney stone visit last week, late, late at night, uh, she's episode 153. Hey, do you got a second to stick around? Just hang in there because I, I just I gotta say a couple of things and then I'm gonna play for you a teaser clip of one of my semi recent bonus episodes. Just hang, just stay there. Sit. Th- where are you going? Where are you going? You're yeah okay. It's more work for you to like unlock your phone, tap the button, skip forward, and all that shit than to just let this play. So just let it play. Like what are you doing? Don't get in between me and your podcast app is what I'm trying to say here. Okay, uh, don't be don't be jealous. Thank you. Okay, so folks, if you have, why am I being so antagonistic to the audience, uh, folks? If you have comments, questions, criticisms, queries, queries are questions, but still, folks, if you uh, want to reach out to me, you can always do so via email at manhorpod at gmail of course, I'd love to see what you thought more publicly. You can always share the Man Whore Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. It's a great way to let me and the guests know that you dug the show. But the best place you can share your thoughts about this week's show are in the episode discussion channel in the Champagne Room. Introduce yourself today to a community of over 500 sex-positive individuals 
at manwarpod.com slash discord. And folks, I got into some more internet shenanigans recently. And, you know, when you want to see, like, what's Billy's dick been up to, a great place besides this podcast to check in on that is my OnlyFans. Mm, OnlyFans, hey. Yeah, Lainey, I got an OnlyFans and I look like a goddamn snack. I'll see you over there. Uh, a couple days ago, I, I hooked up on Discord, not in the champagne room, but on Discord. I hooked up with uh, this lady who she controlled my handy and I filmed the whole thing. And I got to tell y'all, she gives one hell of an electronic hand job. And uh, you can see something like that at OnlyFans.com slash CallMeBilly. Okay, so now I'm going to play y'all a teaser of a, of a bonus episode that I did earlier this year. It's available exclusively on Patreon, which, by the way, did you know my Patreon has over 200 bonus episodes of the Man Whore Podcast? Yeah, that's a lot of extra content. So this is a little clip, a little tease of my bonus episode with Amanda Catherine Loy. Y'all remember her. She was fantastic. And in this bonus episode, she's specifically talking about the BRCA1 gene and her decision to get a double mastectomy. Yeah, Angelina Jolie's her hero. So here's a little teaser. Here's a little clip of that bonus episode. And if you want to gain access to that and more, head on over to patreon.com slash podcast. But for now, enjoy the tease. Have the best week. I hope you get a hand job either in person or from afar. And ladies, vagina people, hey, that applies to you too. Okay, fingering, that's kind of a hand job. It could be a finger job, but if you're really loose and he's really slow, it can be a hand job. So, you know, I hope you all enjoy some hand action this week and weekend. And as always, folks, stay slutty. When I say I chopped off my tits, like I, I use that phrase for my title because it is jarring because it is jarring. Like it's yeah. not – like you're literally physically traumatizing your body intentionally. Like you're you're taking a whatever and scraper at your 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 body and that, that causes physical trauma that is remembered. Um, and you also leave on the other side not having feeling in your breasts and just like – not knowing how you're going to feel about how they look or how you feel about any of it, right? And so mm-hmm. it can just be really, really, really jarring. And I had a lot of anxiety leading up to it, um, a lot of fear. And so that's actually what most of my book is talking about is like all of the fears I had and how I navigated through them and um, what the other side looked like because it was not just like, oh, you did this and now you're good. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, okay, here we are now. Um yeah, so it was a a very wild year, and I'm at the point now where I'm over three years out, and some days I forget.